I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about not on the same page. Well, if you've ever been in a relationship, you know that sometimes you and your partner are not on the same page. One of you wants one thing, the other wants another thing, and neither of you even know what you want from each other. Well, if you're in that kind of situation, you're headed for a disaster because Two people have to be fairly transparent in a relationship. It's really important. You got to know where your partner stands and that can be really difficult and tricky. And I'll tell you why. If you grew up in a home where you didn't feel like you could express your needs, where you could tell your parents what you wanted, what you needed, what was important to you, it's going to be really hard to do that in a romantic relationship. You're going to feel like if you tell your partner what they want, they're going to get angry, they're going to abandon you, they're going to leave you, they're going to scream at you, a lot of different things. So what's frustrating is that you learn how to communicate and express your needs at a very, very early age. I mean, really, Infants express their needs. They cry when they're hungry or when they're cold or when they need you. If your parents weren't emotionally present with you, it's going to be really hard to be emotionally present with your romantic partners. You're going to be scared. You're not going to want to tell them what you like to do or what you want to do because when you did it before, you used to get yelled at or threatened or maybe locked in your room or just said, no, you're not going to get that, and I don't care what you say. And so it's really hard as an adult to express your needs. And you have to be on the same page as your partner in many ways. And obviously, you can never truly know what your partner's thinking. because I mean, they can tell you, this is what I'm thinking, but you can't read their mind, and the only thing you can really go by is what they tell you. So communication is really, really important. And one of the ways that people communicate now all the time is text messaging. And that is really, really ineffective. Unfortunately, not a lot of information is conveyed into a text. And we can easily misread somebody in the way they text something. We could read it in a tone of voice where it sounds angry when they didn't mean that at all. Maybe they were just rushed. Maybe they're just at the stoplight and had only a second to text you or something like that. Communication needs to be effective with a partner to make it work. And text messaging is not really an effective way to do that. Now, of course, it can be helpful and convenient with certain things, but I really don't like text messages with each other. And this is what I tell you guys, that texting can destroy attraction. You really build attraction through being with another person and spending time with another person. So it's really important. And if you've gotten into that habit, I suggest you work on it and focus on a way to be a more effective communicator because the more you're able to communicate with your partner effectively, the better chance a relationship has. So I got a good email today from a woman in her late 20s that was dating a guy at roughly the same age for about a year. And she was telling me a little bit about his home life and she said he told me they don't really say I love you to each other or are affectionate with one another. So think about right what I said just a moment ago. You can hear it all playing out immediately. I'm going to say it again. He told me they don't really say I love you to each other or are affectionate with one another. So think about it. If they don't even tell you something like, I love you, or there's no affection, imagine what his childhood was like. Do you think he was able to say, Mom, I love you, and give her a hug? No. When he went to give her affection, she may have been cold. 
may have been distant, may have said things like, oh, not now, and been dismissive, whatever. But it's going to be a real struggle for him to openly express himself because he's never learned it. I don't know much about his upbringing, but he told me he feels like his father is disappointed with him in regards to getting fired from his well-paying job. So, another example of what I'm saying. His father, who is supposed to be somebody that would give you unconditional love, he doesn't feel like he does. He feels like his dad is disappointed. And you can imagine how much that would affect him. She says, I broke his trust. He caught me in a lie. I was supposedly at home about to go to bed when really I was at a party with a girlfriend of mine. So this is a major issue. Now he knows she's a liar and how can he trust her? That's what he's going to be thinking. How can I trust you? You told me you're at home. You weren't even home. You're out with a girlfriend at a party. Now, does she have her reasons? I'm sure she does. She said, another is he is a control freak. So there you have it. She felt like he was a control freak, so she lied to him. She thought she had to hide going to the party because she thought it would have led to a fight. And quite honestly, it probably would have led to a fight. But if these two were on the same page with each other and from the get-go said, I want to be with you, I want to make this work, I'm committed to this relationship, then the both of them might have felt safer with each other and a lot less scared to open up their feelings towards each other and be honest with each other. All right, so she says, he would call me and if I didn't answer, he hated that. So, he was, I'm sure, scared that she was out doing something, maybe with another guy. And so he hated it. He got all upset, lashed out, was controlling, manipulative, because he was anxious. Just like I teach you guys. He would say he hated being ignored. I bet he did. He was probably ignored a lot in his childhood. And so when you do it, it hurts even more. He also didn't trust me at all because he always thought I was trying to be with him and my ex, which was not the case. But regardless if it was the case or not, that's not how we felt. He was scared that you wanted to be with your ex. Why? I don't know. Did you talk to your ex on a regular basis and he felt uncomfortable? What? was going on there? Was he just insecure because maybe somebody left him for an ex and so now he's traumatized in that? Hard to say based on what's going on here but there's a lot of different interpretations. The bottom line is neither of you seem to be on the same page here about what you both want from this relationship. The thing is he just started changing. He never said he needed some time or whatever. His personality went from I love you to basically friends. So I didn't take it well. At first, I asked why he was being so distant and why he had been acting so differently. I was really showing him that I knew he was changing and I didn't like that. I felt he was just playing games. I texted him my feelings, how I was upset. Okay, well, I like the fact that you were trying to communicate with him, but I think going about it with a text message was probably the wrong idea. And let's see how that plays out. He acted like, I haven't changed, and I don't know what you're talking about, attitude. See, so now she's angry. And because you're not sitting down talking about it, and you could say, well, remember the other day when I called you and said, are we getting together this weekend? And you're like, I don't know. I felt like you didn't care about me and didn't want to see me. Instead, you let, left it very vague. He's saying, I don't know what you're talking about. And maybe he didn't. But the way you're communicating here is not going to help this. Okay. She goes on to say that two of the big problems they had was the trust issues. We both lied to each other. So now he lied to her too. You can't 
have a relationship when you're both lying to each other. It's just going to be destructive and you're both going to be anxious, scared, angry, hurt, manipulative. All kinds of negative things are going to come from acting like that with your partner. So I never believed him for anything. And he never believed me for anything either. This relationship is completely falling apart. And because you guys aren't really communicating with each other well, I think that's a big part of the problem here. Another was just me. That I was a liar. Even though he lied too. So because my lie was the most recent, he was holding it against me. Wow, okay. So there is like no communication going on here. He's just blaming her. She's trying to communicate, but the way she's doing it is not going to really be effective. In, you know, text messages. You guys both really need to sit down with each other. So she wants to know, does he still care or should I give up? I have tested him to see how he acts, and he's giving mixed signals. Okay, well, the testing him is not a healthy way to communicate. You are doing something manipulative here. You're trying to test to see if he really cares about you, but then when you do it, it doesn't get you anywhere because he's giving mixed signals. Maybe part of that is because he knows you're testing him. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just isn't sure how much he cares about you. Could be a lot of reasons. He is out of town and will be for another month and a half. It's a long time. He has been putting me in the friend zone since he pretty much left two weeks ago. Well, when I hear you say the friend zone, that makes me think he said to you, I don't want to be romantic anymore. I just want to be friends. But I'm not reading anything like that. So, again, I'm feeling like this is you interpreting and not really getting the information from him directly. When I express my feelings to him to tell him how much he has changed, he just says he hasn't. The part of the issue is that after the beginning phase of a relationship, it always looks like our partner has changed. And that has to do with a lot of the chemicals changing in our brain, like the oxytocin, the dopamine, the serotonin, all starts to come down to lower levels, and we see things for more clearly, right? We see things more clearly and for what they are, and not so many red flags get ignored anymore. I talked that about that extensively in my video, You've Changed. You should go watch that one. It's a really good one. Um, let me go on here. So when I asked him, are we just going to be friends? He texted back, what do you mean? So he, he probably has no idea what you're thinking. And she says, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> Nobody knows what, you, what each other means in this video. So I told him, he sure has been acting like we're friends, and he just changed the subject. He might not know what's going on here, or maybe he's just not communicating well either. We ended up getting into an argument, and he drunk texted me at 2 a.m. calling me a liar, and that I'm a liar, and I am probably out and not at home. You see, no trust here. You could have easily just FaceTimed him and said, here I am. If it was really going to go that badly. Not that you should have to, but this relationship clearly has little to no trust at all. The last thing I text was, quit with your drama already. So instead of trying to soothe him and calm the situation down, you lashed out at him, and now it's worse. He didn't text me back, and I didn't, or we didn't bother to text each other for a week. I missed him, and I couldn't deal not with hearing him on Sunday, so I texted him to see how he was doing. We caught up from the week, and I told him that I missed talking to him this past week, even though we had an argument last time. I didn't want to lose him. 
He replied that he would call me so we could talk more about it. He called and asked me why it took a week to text him and he doesn't know what I did the week and he thought I went back to my ex. You two have to sit down like adults and figure out what you want. You have to say, okay, what is it that we're doing? Do you just want to date casually? Do you want to be exclusive? Because I'm a little confused. You feel like I'm going back to my ex and I feel like you're lying to me. Neither of us are trusting each other and this is both un unhealthy for both of us. So we continue to text and it seems better he is getting better commu communication wise, but if I tell him I'm going to do something, he doesn't seem to believe me or he seems to be bothered. He has to mention comments like, hmm, I see. If I tell him I'm going to my sister's just to hang out. So I asked him, what's wrong? And he says, everything is fine. See. He is just as much a part of this problem, too. He's not communicating. So I told him, why are you double-sided? You want to act like you don't care, but you get bothered when I'm going to do something. He said, no, not even, and not to be getting myself confused. What a jerk. I need some help. Okay. Well, obviously your relationship with this guy is really unhealthy. No trust in this situation. And I think before either of you guys proceed, you should sit down with each other in person and say, what is it that you want? I don't understand what you want anymore. I feel like no matter what I do, you don't believe me. I can't tell what you want. Let him express his needs and sit down and figure out what it is that's going to happen here. Don't continue this cycle. It's just torture. You're just going to fight every time there is a disconnect and one of you is anxious. The other person's going to lash out, lose emotional self-control. You're going to scream at each other. You're going to fight. And it's just going to make the situation a whole lot worse. So you've got to get on the same page and figure out what you both want from each other and take it from there. And I would suggest taking it slow because at this point there really isn't much of any kind of relationship here is there there's no trust you're lying he's lying he's controlling saying mean things you feel like he's changed he's saying no and i highly highly suggest you stop with this text messaging and do this in person face to face and see where it goes from there so if you want to get my help personally just go to my website, AskCraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching, I do Skype coaching, and if you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching too, but that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Coach Margaret a relationship coach and a psychotherapist with 35 years experience. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. If you would like professional help with your situation, please contact us at askcraig.net.